And as she's seeing the word boundaries, because today we're going to talk about boundaries. Does everybody know what boundaries are in here? Do you know? If you go to our substance abuse class, because Shiloh Ministries has a counseling center, and the counseling center is to the community. And so we offer classes here, and we teach our, or where is the pastor Isabel? Why don't you stand up, Pastor Isabel, back there. She's our substance abuse licensed counselor. Uh, she's been licensed for many years for the state of California. Isn't this one of your subjects? Boundaries. All right, we must have boundaries in our life. And, and we're going to look at the, we're going to look today about boundaries because God put that in my spirit. Um, and because the Lord has taken us on a journey, if you've been with us, uh, you have, uh, you can, for the past few weeks, remember the Lord started with uh, the book of Proverbs, how wonderful it is to learn about the snake on the rock, right? Right, And then he said, remember how wonderful the eagle in the sky. Then we looked at the, the goat and we looked at Jesus saying the goats are, go the goats are going to be on the left and the lambs on the right. Remember Jesus talked about the goat and the lamb. We have been on a journey, right? And then we went to Thanksgiving. We learned that three uh, there's three turkeys in nature which are really prophetic. What is it? The wild turkey, right? Yeah, we, that we learned last week. I mean, before you ate your turkey, I wanted to make sure you knew about the turkeys. <laughs> We don't want you to be a turkey. We want you to be an eagle. There was one, the wild turkey that has the long legs that runs really fast. That's what we run. And then, of course, there was the vulture turkey that eats dead things, that eats carcasses, and it dies prematurely because of the, you know, the bacteria. When we eat dead things that should be, uh, we should let go, that can poison us, right? Yeah. And then the domestic turkey is the one we eat, and the one you ate, which they get really big, 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 and all it is eat, eat, eat. And then their legs develop a disease because they're so heavy, their, their legs are weak, and we can't just eat, eat. We got the word. We got to go do something with the word, amen? Yeah. So we can't be, we can't just be sitting, not doing nothing. We have to be busy for the Lord, and especially if you're working on yourself, you're busy. If you're working on, on your life, you're busy, amen? So we know that you're, 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 you're working on your you're working on your life, and that's a good thing when you're rebuilding your life, amen? amen. So let, let's look at the word today because I want to talk about boundaries, and of course the boundaries are going to be where? The soul, right? That old soul of yours, oh my God. You are what? Spirit, soul, and body. That's not my word, that's the Bible. God said you are a spirit being, you have a soul. Genesis 2, 7, God breathed in you and you became a living what? Soul. And then, of course, this is the body. This is from the world of what? Matter, right? We're created from the dust of the earth. And we know that, that this body just follows as your follows the leading of your soul or will follow the leading of your spirit. We all want to walk in the spirit, right? That's what God's thoughts working in you, God's heart pumping in you. Uh, that's God's character, his personality, the will of God in your life, godly, goodly emotions, right? Yeah. And then we know the soul is the war ground where the enemy, the soul is what? Mind, will, emotions, conscience. Your conscience has a what? Voice. And the Bible says there's two, five types of conscience. It's in your word, uh, an offended conscience. I'm so offended. I'm so hurt. And then if you're offended, you have a wounded conscience. Oh, oh my God, right? Oh my God, I'm so wounded. I'm so... And then if you're offended and wounded, you become weak. I just can't. It's too hard. I just can't. So your conscience talks to you, correct? We're learning yeah. this. And then, of course, you can have an idle conscience. That's in your Bible. The word conscience is in your Bible 30 times, and it talks about your conscience has a voice. That's why Hebrews 9, 14, the word says, let his blood clean your what? Conscience, right? We have to have a God conscience. A spirit man, God conscience, right? Pure conscience, a conscience of faith. But the soul is where the enemy comes and he begins to manipulate what you see, what you hear, what you say, what you think. To be what? To, to filter your conscience, pollute your conscience, disease your perception, affect your attitude, to have a bad attitude. And then, of course, we already know that this is where the enemy wants to breathe in you. But God said he breathed in you and you became a living soul. We have to have the word breathing and living in our soul. That's where the peace of God is. And then, of course, the body is just a vehicle. So we're going to look at boundaries. So it, because we did the classes here, I had to start learning about uh, what we were teaching. And the fact was is that because I was uh, going to the courts and I was going to probation, Department of Children's Services, I was going to introduce my, uh, the program here to the parole department. So I went personally and knocked on doors. Did half the time I don't know what I'm doing, but I just fall into it. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, my like, God, he just, uh, he just opens the door. And I just go knock, you know. Praise the Lord. I'm not afraid of being rejected. I was rejected all my life. I know how to deal with that, you know. <laughs> you, when you know who you are in Christ Jesus, it doesn't matter who rejects you. That's your problem. 
But when you're when you that when God loves you and you find the love of God, it's all that matters. It's just like it's just you know what I say, if they're rejecting me, they're rejecting me, it's fair, they're probably broken, you know, dealing with some stuff. I'm okay. Because you know, so I just go knock on doors, praise the Lord. I have so many doors shut up, it was crazy, but kept knocking, kept knocking, then we found one open. Praise the Lord. So I began to educate myself. This is before we got our drug concert and uh we had Pastor Mike when they got certified for anger management, domestic violence, victims, batters. And he was uh, doing individual counseling way before that for many years. Uh, he was doing counseling uh, at, uh, for our church for like three years over the phone at 12 midnight. He's at night. All, I'm not. I'm snoring. I'm asleep. But he's on the phone with people calling in from the program that our pastor was on TV. So he would answer the calls and he would be praying with them, counseling them with the word of God. So we had been really busy with that. When God opened up the door, I learned about boundaries because I had to learn my curriculum because in case... They were going to ask me questions. I had to understand what the drug program was. We found a concert. The concert, drug concert came in at that time. And uh, I began to learn because I was going to have a meeting with the judge. Where's Brian at? Brian's here. I met Brian and his mother. Bertha! Oh, hi, Bertha. There's Bertha. Bertha, I met Bertha, and uh, and she had a community service. I went to go knock on her door so I could get community workers. Met beautiful Bertha. She connected me to have a lunch with a judge. His name is Judge Barena, right? Barena. Yeah. And so she made an appointment with me to go see the judge so I, I could introduce our program. See, that's God. So she has a lunch date. I meet the judge. He's the drug court judge. And I, I had already studied like two weeks. I learned, I, I, I got my all kinds of, I learned about Prop 36, PC 1000, all the drug, what, what they're going to, I said, he's going to ask me questions. I have to know what I'm doing. I have to know what I'm saying. So I'm like this cross. I studied all the drug programs that we're going to open up here. And so I go have lunch with him and he walks in. I go, oh my God, he looks like Tony Orlando. I thought he's going to come in. I thought he's going to come in with a cane all old, you know. He came in and said, I even told him, you look like Tony Orlando. So we go to lunch and guess what? He won't ask me one question. That's God. Because God said, I don't need your help, Priscilla. So he doesn't ask me that one question. He just said, how many people can you see? I said about 200. He said, okay, I'll send you 200 people. I'll just start saying them to you. That was it. And that's how we started the drug program. That's what I learned about boundaries. Because I, I had to learn about boundaries because that was part of the curriculum. Triggers, okay, triggers. Relapse prevention, you know. All these terminologies. And man, they're so good for your soul. <laughs> for your intoxicated soul. <laughs> The soul that gets under the influence yeah, of the enemy or your yeah. abuser, yeah. right? That wants to control you. I call Satan the abuser, amen? Yeah. You're in a relationship, a dysfunctional one, I should say. Yeah. When we have a relationship with our emotions. I had to learn how to separate that. It just was so real to me. It was breathing in me. I had to learn how to, just, that's not me. That's not, it's, it's a foreign object. It's a foreign being. Trying to breathe and, and, and cause me to have all these emotions and desires that aren't that are only temporal. You know, it only brings a little bit of pleasure that I live like. Yeah. You know? <laughs> well, that's what happens. I, that, I'm just telling you the truth. I'm telling you what I went through. Okay, and you're talking about somebody that's been on was on, 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 on was under the influence for 15 years. I was a drinker. I was on drugs. Woo! My kids aren't here, but if you ask them, they're like, oh my God, my mother's too much. <laughs> if you ask them, oh, I put him through so much, but praise God for his love, mercy, and compassion. Because he can restore what the enemy has done. Yeah. So they, I'm just giving you this big old insight on how I learned about boundaries. So when I'm going to teach them to you, God put it in my spirit to talk about boundaries today. Why? Because you learned some things in the past few weeks. You learned some, some good word. You learned a lot in the past few weeks and you got to chew it and think about what God gave you for the past few weeks. Look at your notes. You know, I think uh, uh, we're, we're now, um, Brother Rick has put the teaching, the Sunday teachings. Uh, Brother Rick, can you raise up your hand right there, Brother Rick? He put the Sunday teachings on Facebook. They're on Facebook now. So you can go back now and you can, what I'm saying right now, you can rewind it and, oh, I like that part. So you'll be able to, uh, to to study, write it down because it really ministered to you what God said. And now, oh, what did you? What did, what did God say? I forgot. So go back, go to the YouTube, and you'll find the YouTube. And now Sundays are recording. They're being recorded, and, and they're going to be. Then pretty soon we're going to be on HSBN on Sundays too. So that's another plus. But HSBN is it, it's aired around the world. I said I know that because I'm the vice president now, and I work and I see the computer, I've gotten really involved 
in what the what that what the Holy Spirit Broadcasting Network battleship. I call it the battleship that I join. I got my own submarine here, but I join the battleship. I got join the battleship, and it's it's just a, it's it's a God is moving, and I've seen I've seen. I, I'm able to see where it's viewed. I'm able to see the amount of views, 120,000 views in just two stations. Wow. And that's Roku and Amazon, I believe. That's not even the other ones that were on. And we just got on Africa, which was a big miracle, which is satellite. They put HSB in, and it, co it covers most of Africa. So that, that, is, that is where God is moving. So all the people that are teaching in there, that are all the ministers, they're being uh, circulated around around the globe Amen. as God has ordained it because God is also El Capitan of the battleship, okay? Uh, he is the captain of the battleship of HSBN and just like he's the captain of the battleship. Here I just work on the battleship, amen? And we work for God to take his word to his people that need to hear the word of God because that's how God, also Satan works through sound, God works through sound too. He'll speak his word into you. You receive it. Act out and walk in what God says and believe it with all your heart. So we're going to look today about uh, boundaries. I, I want to call this God teach me boundaries and I'm going to give you the definition of boundaries. Now there's a difference of boundaries and walls. Many of you have built up walls in your soul. I'm talking about your soul here, okay? This is the war ground. This is where God breathed in you. Satan wants the breath of God. The enemy wants the breath of God in you. So I want you to know that sometimes we build walls. Uh, walls of I'll never let anybody break my heart the way he did or she did. You, we build a wall of anger, a wall of bitterness, a wall of fear. And we hide behind the wall. And when you're behind a wall, you can't see. When you're behind a wall, you can't hear. There's like an echo. Are you hearing the Lord? So we have put walls, walls of I'll never let anybody do that to me again. Walls of I'll never trust anybody. Any, you say like that. Anybody. From the, the gut. And these walls that we build have to be broken down. Because what happens is we will be robbed by what we allow the enemy to engrave in our walls. I call it the tombstones at a cemetery in memory of what they did to me. Okay, so what happens is that we begin to build these walls and what it does, it, it, and this is something that goes on in God's temple. We're the temple. Okay, God puts us on a rebuilding project when we meet him. We begin to break down the walls and then we begin to bring a foundation, the foundation of Jesus Christ. He is the cornerstone. And we're going to look at scripture because many of you here that, that have come to this house, the house of Shiloh, the house of God, you are coming here because God is going to put you from this day forward today. You are going to be a construction worker. You are going to begin to rebuild, listen, rebuild everything in you. And one of the things that you need to recognize are the walls. And those walls must be turned into boundaries. Because there is walls of protection, but they're God's word that protects us, okay? There is, there is boundaries that we place in our life so that the enemy or people cannot have a revolving door coming in and out of our soul all day long. And when they leave, they go in our soul, they leave a piece of the spirit that's controlling them. Or they leave a piece of the sin that they're in. So that comes in us. And then some residue, something is in us and it begins to speak to us. We begin to look at it. We begin to hear it. That's why the Lord says, guard your heart with all diligence. For out of your heart flows the issues of life. So hear God today because today you are being instructed to go on a rebuilding project. And you're going to rebuild these walls that have been devastated. You're going to be, you're, gonna, you're also, some of you have, you don't even have walls. You're all, you're all quemado inside. You've been burned to a prison. <laughs> People are like that. I used to be like that. Where I had nothing, just emptiness. I felt so empty. I felt lonely. All these emotions just lived and breathed inside of me. And I didn't know that the enemy had that much power because I didn't know the power of God yet. I didn't know that I was spirit, soul, and body. I did not know that my conscience was controlling me. I did not know that my perception was so diseased, demented, and distorted because of the pipeline of what the enemy put inside of me through his, through his I should say, the frequency and the sound that he put inside of me. Well, what I was looking at, he controlled what I looked at, what I listened to, and then what comes? Everybody say emotions. Come on. Emotions. So we see the word boundary means guidelines, 
rules or limits that a person creates to identify for oneself. Again, boundaries are guidelines, rules, or limits that a person create, creates to identify for himself. Safe and permissible, way, permissible ways for other people to behave around him or her. And how he or she will respond when someone steps outside these li those limits. Boundaries represent physical and emotional limits that you don't want other people to cross. Okay? I call the boundaries the bloodline. You know, Satan cannot, can't cross my blood, but uh, my boundaries. So, in, have you ever said you crossed the line already? You, you just crossed the line. So, boundaries, as you see here, boundaries are guidelines and limits, okay, a person creates to identify oneself. So I have, we, de, we, we build, we have to develop boundaries, okay? What do you mean? That's the, don't cross the line. What does that mean? Don't, don't cross, you stay on that side, I stay on this side. Don't cross the line and walk, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna develop a boundary, okay, especially with the enemy, okay? How many have people that rock your world? Don't raise your hands, your feet, and everything else. <laughs> How many know your triggers? I always tell people, know your triggers. You gotta know your triggers because that's another illegal drug alcohol. But you gotta know your triggers. You have to identify your triggers, okay? You know what my trigger is? Coyotes. I can't look at coyotes. Why? Because I live around coyotes and I got little dogs. So I, I, I said, Lord, I swear when I wake up this morning, I should swear by heaven earth. Lord, when I wake up this morning, I am not gonna think about a coyote because of course I live in the hills. When I moved in there, I didn't, so coyotes, well, well I, I know this sounds silly to you, but well, see my trigger is in the X in Texas. <laughs> my, my triggers are not alcohol, or people, you know, don't get on my nerves, because I know how to, I, know, I have boundaries for that, I already know how to deal with all that. But with animals, that's my weakness, and you have weakness. So I know my weakness and I know my triggers, right? So I wake up and I said, I'm not gonna think about a coyote today, I'm not gonna look at a coyote today, I'm not, because I'm gonna go outside and, and one time, three of them are right up. I go, oh, blood of Jesus. <laughs> so then I go following them to make sure there's no cat. This is how crazy I am. I'm serious. One time I stopped and there was a coyote and a cat. I jumped off my car and started chasing that coyote. 5.30 in the morning. That, that's why I told the Lord, you got to keep these away because that's, that's my trigger. That's my weakness. Is anybody hearing the Lord? I mean, yeah. I know. I call, the, I call that sound a tormentor. <laughs> So I have to have boundaries. I can't let myself, you understand? I can't allow that to cross the bloodline, okay? You have you have to develop boundaries. I'm not gonna let, let that sound or that narrative, I'm not gonna let it cross over. I have boundaries against this situation, this, right, this situation, this person, whatever circumstance, I'm developing boundaries. That means I'm not gonna let it cross the line. Do you understand that? You have to develop boundaries with the enemy. Do you understand that you have to develop boundaries? You can't cross. I, put, I plead the blood right here. I said, I plead the blood of Jesus. I'm developing a boundary all around me. You cannot come inside my land, Satan. You cannot come inside my mind. You cannot come inside. So I, I have to recognize what my trigger is, and i got to identify what my boundaries are. And I know that the enemy knows how to cross the line of your boundaries. That's why you have to recognize, identify, and conquer. Let's all say that. Recognize, identify, and conquer. Any trigger that's, that, that takes you to anger. You know we have an anger management course. And do you know that there's there's 10 levels that we need of anger management? Okay, 10, actually eight tools. But I, have you ever went to the doctor? They say, well, what's your pain? And I took my mom to the emergency the other day. She goes, I said, Mom, what's your pain? She had to think about it. I said, Mom, what's your pain? Well, let me see. I'm thinking about What's your pain, Mom? Well, about a six. You know. I said, well, okay. So there is there is levels of anger that you, do you understand that? That you, you go into. You go, well, how's your anger? Level one. Good. Keep it like that, will you? Amen. Don't feed the anger. Don't feed it. Don't start eating what the enemy's feeding you to take you to a level anger for eight, nine, then ten, you're exploded all over, bleeding all over, bad gas all over the place. My God, there goes all your body language, your attitude. 
and the atmosphere that's created. You understand the Lord? Yes. See, I got the spirit of self-control because yes. that is a gift of the spirit. Right. Amen. Yeah. So you have to lift up your hand while you're by yourself. Go in the rest and put a pillow on your face. Scream there. I don't know what. <laughs> but begin to intercept. Yes. Look at and, 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 and develop boundaries yes, yes. where I'm not going to give the enemy power over my emotions or soul. Because today I learned about boundaries, okay? I'm going to have boundaries in my life. Okay, so no, you see your wife or husband or somebody you love that irritates that you know what out of you? And you already see. And there, there you go into that narrative. You got, you got the you got the bloodline here. You got the boundary right here. You said, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to let nobody have the power over me. I, that's it. It ends today. I'm rebuilding my temple. Amen. And I'm breaking down the walls of anger with you. I'm breaking down the walls of hurt with you. I'm breaking down the walls of disappointment with you. I'm breaking them all down. And I'm going to build up the walls of Jerusalem here in life. Build up the walls of love. Build up the walls of trust. Build up the walls of hope. Build up the walls of peace. That's the land I want to live in. So my boundaries. We have to have boundaries. This is your job. Do you understand the Lord? It's you. you got to do this. You're a soldier. You're a warrior. And God is empowering you to have the power over your life. Where nothing can control or manipulate you. It feels real good when that day. It's like you, you, you really, you're like really like, it feels real good to be in control of yourself. <laughs> it feels real good. I, just, I, I get in my bed. I say, oh, thank you, Lord, for my bed. I had such a beautiful day. We're just like, la, 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 la. It's, this is life. This is life of God. You may have bad news, but you know how to release it to the Lord. Yes. Like immediately, like, oh, I can't carry that because that's going to weigh me down. Because, listen, I have a God that loves me, cares for me, and he's concerned of everything that happens to me. And if anything happens, I'm going to give it to God. I'm going to let him do it. I'm not going to carry this because if I carry it, it'll crush me. Yes. So it's something I just say, here, Daddy, here, here you go. Take it, Father God. I can't, I can't deal with that right now. I just can't. And we have to understand that God is here in this temple. Amen. You're not alone. Amen? Oh, does everybody understand boundaries? Amen. Yes, amen. Okay, good. So you want to know here, Do I want you to see here in Deuteronomy chapter 25, it says Amalek. This is a demon of doubt and unbelief, okay? This is the same uh, spelling in Hebrew. You'll learn this if you go to school of ministry, because that's one of your handouts. But Amalek is a spirit. Of, actually, it was a, a tribe in the days of Israel. And what they did is they attacked the children of Israel when they left Egypt, and they went from behind. Listen. That enemy went from behind. The tribe of the Amalekites went from behind and 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 and, did, and and killed the weak people, the ones that were feeble. And and uh, so the Lord made a notice, served a notice that every generation will have a war with Amalek, and that we are utterly to destroy the spirit of Amalek, which is a spirit of doubt and unbelief, which can really cripple you. Amen. So we say doubt and unbelief. Come on. So it says. It says. So this is the war that we're in. It says. I want you to see this, uh, uh, Deuteronomy 25, 18. It says, Now Amalek met you along the way, the Lord said, and attacked you. Uh, uh, he said, those that were straggling in the re at the rear when you were exhausted and weary, and he does not fear. He does not fear God. So you're going to have to fight an enemy that don't shut up sometimes, okay? Uh -huh. Don't fear God. It says it right here. Don't fear God. The Amalekites. What is that? Doubt and unbelief. Okay? So you're going to have to fight the good fight of faith. Even when you're still here, you got to say. See, you got to respond to every attack of the enemy. you got to say something. Because if not, what he says is going to come inside of you. It starts talking to you. You start hearing it. You start looking at it. Now, this is why we have to have a shield of faith. Why? Because arrows will be shot. So we have to speak. We can't just stay silent. Because if we stay silent, it's like a seed begins to grow in us, the seed of the enemy. So make sure that we speak, amen? So here we see, you see the Lord's the Holy Bible, God breathing in you, okay? The breath of God. God uses this analogy as the breath because we breathe, right? Breathe life. We breathe in the air, it gives us life. And guess what? The word of God is the breath of God that gives us life. So we see here in Genesis 2, 7, God breathed in you. And in them, and they became living souls. Okay, so now we see, as, a, as I, I put the picture together, now we, we see here in John chapter 20, verse 22. I want to go into the scene when Jesus Christ, he was crucified. Watch this. 
He was risen from the dead. He began to walk amongst his people before he before he exited the earth. And when he at the end of the time, he had his disciples there. And this is the story I extracted the scripture that he said this. Jesus said this. He's gonna he's gonna go to heaven. He says I'm gonna go prepare a place for you in my father's house. There's many mansions. Isn't that so beautiful? I believe it with all my heart. And so we see here that when Jesus left, he did something. He did something. And I want you to see what he did. It says this. It says uh, it says here, and then Jesus breathed, what? Breathed on them and said, receive ye the Holy Spirit. So just like in the beginning, in the Garden of Eden, where God created man and, and God what breathed in them, right? And then he fell, right? The enemy, uh, the enemy came in in the form of a serpent. We know that he lost his authority. He lost his position. The, we know Adam and Eve, they lost it. They were exiled from the Garden of Eden. And we know that now Jesus Christ came. Jesus died for the kids, our sins. Jesus gave us the keys to death, hell, and the grave. Now he's going to ascend. But he, before he ascends, he's going to do what? <sighs> Breathe. There it is. Hey, we're back in Eden. <laughs> we're back in our rightful place. This is beautiful. Get the revelation. See, Eden is the place of an atmosphere. Ah, okay. Spiritually, you are in the Garden of Eden, where it's paradise, where it's peace, right? But we have to understand that what we receive from God, we need to protect. That what God has given us, we need to have boundaries. You better stay on that side. Don't come in here with all that stuff you got. Don't come in here with all your living in English. I got my boundaries hanging out right here. I'm on my, I'm on my, my joy line right here. Here comes a dirt. Like, remember, what was that? What was that? Uh, Charlie Brown. What's up with all the dirt? Remember? Pink Linus. Linus. That's the way we look at the spirit sometimes. When we come in, we got to remember the enemy wants to put his heaviness on you. Amen? So you put your boundaries up. Amen? What does that mean? I'm not letting anybody in. That's right. I didn't say walls. I hate you. I can't stand you. I don't, I'm so bitter with you. I'm so... Them are walls. They're not boundaries. Don't get confused. Recognize if you have walls, you need to break them down. Everybody say in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father God, I break down every wall. Every wall. Amen. Amen. Okay, so we need to defend the boundaries that God gives us. Amen. That's why Psalms 142 says, Deliver my soul from prison so I can praise your name. Now, now, as I begin to teach you the word, I thought that was old teaching, but this is the story, this is the teaching, this is our theme scriptures. I want you to see, I made a house right here because you are now the house, okay? I want you to know in 1 Corinthians, look at what the word says. I didn't come up with this analogy. This is God's picture from the world of matter. He said right here in 1 Corinthians 3 9, for we are laborers together with who? God, okay? And you are his husbandary, and you are God's building. Everybody say God's building. God, God said, you are God's building. That's what God said. You are God's temple. You are God's building. And a building and a, and a house has doors, windows, and rooms. Are we correct with that? Yes. It has furniture, correct? Yes. And it says, you're my buildings. Now watch this. It says right here, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, and you, says, and you are built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone. So see how I put a bunch of rocks under here, a bunch of hard rocks. I put prophets, I put faith, I put Jesus. So this is the foundation. And Jesus Christ is the cornerstone of your foundation. Okay, then Deuteronomy 22, verse 8 the Lord says, when you build a new house, everybody say a new house, come on. Yeah. When you build a new house, you shall make a battlement for your roof. Okay, so God, see the roof right there? That's a battlement. I said, Lord, why do you want a battlement? So God said, I want your roof. Everybody say a spiritual picture, come on. He said, your, your roof has to be a roof of a battlement. So I looked in that, and then I did to study, right? So I see, oh, what happened to you? See how it's, uh, you see how in between their spaces, it, so in other words, it's like this, and there a person could stand there with an arrow, aha, and then there's another height, and then another, another arrow, aha. So he wants your roofs to be a roof of a battlement, so this way you could be on the roof ready for any enemy with the sword of the Lord. He wants you to be on a rock, so all the roofs in your house have to have 
be made with battlements so that you can stand there and defend what God has given you. Are you here? Are you here? Are you here? Are you here? All right. So now that you got your foundation built, now that you got the roof and you're standing there looking outside your roof, <laughs> praise the Lord, ready to defend the city. Are you hearing the Lord? Amen. Amen. This is good. The Lord gave me this. Okay, Ephesians chapter uh, 20. Oh, we did that one already. Matthew chapter 20, 21. It says, Jesus said unto them, the stone which the builders rejected, the same has become the head cornerstone, which of course is Jesus Christ. Now, I want to share as, as, as I'm teaching you about boundaries between what, besides wall, not walls. What I, I've shared the foundation, the apostles and the prophets, this is what you're teaching. I, I shared about the roof, okay, the roof being, uh, the Lord said you must make your roof a new roof, a, a, a roof, like a battlement roof where you can stand in between the roof and defend the city or this, this nation here because we're like nations. And then, of course, we know that the Bible says Jesus Christ is the door. How many know that? Jesus Christ is the door. So we know that the door is protected and defended by who? Jesus Christ. So we don't let anybody in our house, okay? Jesus has to give them the green light to come into your house. Some of you got no doors and no windows. Everybody comes in and out. Are you hearing the Lord? This is the truth. I'm trying to help you here. Shut the door, Jesus. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I'm going to put some wrought iron windows. <laughs> what are the windows? I hear your eyes, your ears, your mouth, the doors, your heart. Praise the Lord. Okay, Joshua 24, uh, verse 15. And it seems evil unto you to, if it, if it, and if it seems evil for you to serve the Lord, Joshua is speaking a word to the people. If it seems evil for you to serve the Lord, then choose this day, God said, who you're going to serve. Okay? Whether the gods of your father, whether the, the gods which your father served, which were the, on the other side of the flood, which was in, uh, in Egypt, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So that makes it very clear. Don't serve your emotions. Can I say that, please? Don't be a servant to your emotions. Because emotions can be very idolatrous, very paganist, paganism, or pain. Our emotions, we become servants of our emotions. Are you hearing the Lord? Please hear the Lord. I'm not trying to attack you. I'm trying to educate you. So I never knew that I was serving my emotions. I never knew that I was a slave to my soul. Didn't know that till the word of the Lord came and delivered my soul from the hand of the enemy. Where now I have a land of authority and peace that you would not even believe the glorious presence of God that I wake up, walk with, go to sleep with. There's like such an atmosphere of God that you were created to live in. Do you remember the Garden of Eden where they walked in the cool of the day with the Lord? This is where he wants you. Amen. Give him a hand clap. Amen. All right. Good for you. So then, of course, we said, God, we're going to look really quick. It says, we are called out. I want you to know we are called out. It says, for by faith, Abraham, when he was called out. Everybody say, I'm called out. Come on. Oh. I was called out to go to a place. See, Abraham was called out, and guess what? He went. He said he went to a place that he should have to receive an inheritance. He obeyed, and he went out, not knowing where he was going, but by faith, he sort of journeyed into a land of promise, as in a strange land, dwelling in the tabernacles of Isaac and Jacob. For he looked for a city which foundation and whose builder and maker is God. Okay? So we know that we know that, that Abraham followed God, didn't know where he was going, but God had a great place for him. Genesis 28, Jacob rose up early in the morning and took a stone. Here we see Jacob, he has a vision. And he has a vision, and he, uh, uh, he sees a beautiful vision, but he calls the place Bethel. Everybody say Bethel. Bethel. Now, Bethel is what we call our land. This is our house of Bethel. Watch this. Bethel means the house of God, a house of worship, a house of prayer, the house of honor and respect, the house of life, the house of light, excuse me. So in other words, everybody say no cussing in the house. Come on. You know my mother, as rowdy as we were, one of cholas and all that, man, we weren't allowed to cuss in the house. Ooh, we got in trouble, we said the F-bomb. My mom didn't let us cuss. 
She didn't let us cuss, so I wasn't so used to it. We, when we were out there, we'd try to cuss and everything. Oh, but you better not cuss in front of my mama. Oh, she don't like that. I thank God for that. Amen? Yeah. I said, I thank God for that. Praise the Lord. So, not, but no F-bombs in this house. Are you hearing the Lord? I said, are you hearing the Lord? Because yes. every time you say an F-bomb or B-bomb or S-bomb, whatever, you get a spirit that jumps right into your soul. Is it worth it? No. Say, shoot. shoot. God darn it. But I'm like, <laughs> Take the God darn Say, double darn something. She, uh, what is it? Oh, slap, uh, shut the front door or something. So, shut the front door. Come up with something that's going to be not, not something that's unclean. Yeah. Say something. Double darn, shoot, but do not say bad words. Because everybody say, I'm the house of Bethel. Come on. I'm the house of Bethel. No saying bad words. Are you hearing the Lord? Yes. Today is uh, November what? Okay. What? 27? 21. 27. Today, November 27. Everybody say, Father. Father. Forgive me. Forgive me. No more bad language. No more bad language. In the house of Bethel. House of Bethel. Give God a high clap. Come on. I mean, can you please make a bow to the Lord? I said, come up with a word that's not a bad word. You know, something that you can say to express your anger. I don't know, whatever's going on in your life. So, okay, because today you are now the house of Bethel. Okay, the house of prayer. Um, and no bad words, okay? Matthew 21, 13. Jesus said, it is written, my house shall be called the house of what? Prayer. So this house should be the house of prayer. This is the house of honor. This is the house. We have to rebuild our temple. We have to break down the walls and we, we begin to develop boundaries. Are you hearing the Lord? Boundaries. You can't come in and out anymore of my soul. I have a boundary that I've made before the Lord. Okay. I have boundaries. I'm not going to let your battles or whatever you're going through to come into my soul anymore. Because today, Father God gave me the word boundaries in the house of Bethel, the house of prayer, the house of praise, the house of worship. Okay, I'm not going to say bad words anymore that are, that are a disgrace. We're going to be able to understand that God is very concerned about what's living in your house. Amen. Give a hand up, somebody. Amen. All right. In closing, oh my God, I'm going to all this stuff. Okay. The spirit of God. The spirit of God has made me, and what? The breath of the Almighty gives me life. Okay. Job thirty-two eight. But if a but it is a Spirit in man. Everybody say my spirit man. Come on. Yeah. But it is a spirit in man and the breath of the Almighty gives them what? Understanding. Job 26, 13. By his God, by his God's breath, by his God, God's breath, the heavens are cleared. His God's hand has pierced the fleeing serpent. Notice how the breath of God, okay, his hand, his breath will pierce fleeing serpents. Who's a serpent? The enemy. That's why we need to speak the word. When we speak the word, it is the breath and it's the power of God's word coming out of you like a sword. You are going to be filled with not people, not negative emotions, but you are going to learn to be filled with the spirit of the living God. With his breath breathing in your soul, coming into wholeness. Amen. Ezekiel 37, this is the time when, when we, we know that Ezekiel had a, valley, a vision of a lot of dead bones. People were dead, which were the army of God. It says, speak a prophetic message to these bones, the Lord tells Ezekiel. Dry bones, listen to the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says. He said, I'm going to put what? Breath in you. And make you live again. And I will put what? Breath into you. And you will come to life. Amen. Notice how God said he's going to bring his breath into you. Amen. Thank you Jesus. And, and in closing. Let's go here better. I'm going to go here. Because for the sake of time. Here we go. Jacob bowed a bow. This is really important. Because I want you to hear what the Lord is saying here. Because Jacob was in a place, and he named this place Bethel. And Bethel means what? The house, right? So we are now developing and establishing Bethel. Today, God has given you the word 
Bethel, the house of worship, the house of praise, the house of honor. This is who you are. Okay? And this house shall be called a house of prayer. Okay? And not only that, I receive today God's boundaries. Okay? I I receive the word where I break down the walls of all the things that happened to me that I had built and I hid behind. Okay, remember on the walls, how many know what graffiti is? Some of you got some graffiti on your walls. In memory of what they did to me. In memory of what I lost. In memory of whatever it is that has kept your soul in captivity. Today, God said, I'm breaking down the walls. And you're going to learn boundaries. And you're going to receive what God says. And you're going to be real smart. Or the enemy can't outsmart you anymore. Do you understand? See, when the word brings wisdom, revelation, understanding. Where you're not manipulated anymore. You're not controlled anymore. You are free. You're not looking and thinking where they're at. Well, who's doing that? Well, no, your mind don't. Have, listen. Your mind don't go there no more. You took the power from the enemy. I, I, I am entrusting God with my life. I'm entrusting God with my church. I'm trusting God with my husband, my children. I'm trusting God. I'm looking to God. I'm not looking to man. You understand that? Because when we look to man, we look at, we, we tend to look for faults. Or we look to what you did. You know, that, that those faults start talking. That's why they got to come down. Everybody say, come down. Huh? Thank you, Jesus. How beautiful. But look at how beautiful. So, came to, uh, so Jacob, in one of the worst times in his life, he's going to run from his brother. He's running from his brother that wants to kill him. And he goes to a place that he encounters God. So it came there. So he came. It says, Genesis 28. So he came to a certain Jacob, to a certain place and stayed there all night because the sun had set. And he took one of the stones and uh, of the place and he put his head on this stone, and he lay down and in that place, and he fell asleep. Then he dreamed, and behold, a ladder was set set up upon the on the earth, and its top reached heaven. And there were angels of God; they were ascending and descending, right from heaven to earth. It says, at verse thirteen, and behold, the Lord stood above. The Lord stood above what? The top of the ladder. So he sees the angels going back. And then he's look. Oh, there's the Lord. He sees the Lord, right? Here we go. It says, "And behold, the Lord stood above it." And he, and then God speaks to him. He says, "Jacob." He goes, "I'm the Lord God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac." He said, "Behold, I am with you." He said, "I'm going to keep you wherever you go, and will bring you back to this land." And I will not leave you until I have done what I have spoken to you. He said that Jacob woke up out of his sleep. He said, surely the Lord was in this place and I didn't even know it. Wow. Boy, I don't want to be the person that I didn't even know God was here. Wow. That's the last place I want to be. Yeah. And I want you to know that God said he lives and breathes in you and you don't even know it. You don't want to be, well, I didn't even know he was here. He's always been there. Yes, he's all, you wake up, he's there. You go to sleep, he's there. During the day, all the, he's there with you. He's there, he lives in you. I don't want to, so I didn't even know he was here. Wow. Amen? Amen. Now know it. He said, I didn't even know it. Okay, so I said, don't be the people that don't want to know, know it. Verse 17, and he was afraid, and he said, how awesome is this place. How awesome to walk in the spirit. Amen. How awesome. <laughs> he said wow. he was afraid. How awesome in this place. There was, another, not, there was none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. Wow. Then Jacob rose up in the, in the morning. And he took a stone. And he put on his he put that he had put on his head. He set it upon, upon the pillar. And he poured oil on top of it. And he called the name of that place Bethel. The house of God. Give God a hand clap. Praise the Lord. Come on, Bethel. Come on, Bethel. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Psalms 122. Pastor Mike here. Look at Psalms 22. Here's your scripture. 122.7. Peace be within your what? Walls. God said, peace be within your walls. 
peace be within your walls. And look at what else he says. And prosperity. Look at And prosperity within thy palaces. That's the will of God. That you have peace within your walls. No more walls, everybody. No more walls. Amen. Praise the Lord. Can we get Anthony here? Is he here? Thank you, Jesus. We're going to pray. Thank you, Jesus. Can we receive the word of Bethel? Thank you, Lord. The house of God, you are in a rebuilding project. Come on, you understand boundaries. You're going to put boundaries up in your life, and you're going to break down the walls. Praise his holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. If there's anybody here that does not know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, today is the day of your salvation. Amen. And if you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, when we close this service, we're going to invite you up to accept Jesus in your heart, and we're going to pray with you. We're going to open up the prayer lines after service so that you can come if you want to receive prayer. If you can't sleep at night, you need to be up here. If you have insomnia, that you can't sleep because the Bible says he gives his beloved a peaceful sleep in the book of Psalms. Amen. Amen. If, you are, if you have anxiety, if you have a lot of racing thoughts, please come up and get prayer. Because we will pray for you in the prayer. The, uh, we have our pastors that help us here that have a clean mind and a clean heart. And they will pray and the Holy Spirit will flow through them right to you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Is he here, Anthony? Go ahead and play, Anthony. Thank you, Father. Father, we pray. Bow your heads, everybody. Father, we thank you for the house of Bethel. Thank you, God, that I am now in an atmosphere of construction, Father God. I'm a construction worker, Father. And I'm going to build up this house. Lord, we're going to build up our house, Lord. We're going to shut the door, Father God, because Jesus is the door. And Lord, we're going to... We're going to close up those windows in our in our eyes, in the windows of our soul, our ears, Father. And we're going to build the basement roof upon our new house, Lord God. Where we will guard, Father God, we will guard everything that wants to try to come into our house, Lord. Because we understand, Lord, that there are boundaries that we put. Our God-given boundaries, Father God. In Jesus' name, Lord God, no longer will the walls, Father God, speak to us. The walls of hurt, the walls of anger, the walls of shame. Lord, we bring down those walls in the name of Jesus, Lord. And we thank you that you build up the walls of Jerusalem in us, Father God. Walls of love, walls of hope, walls of peace. We give you permission, Lord. Come and take your, your place in our temple. Lord, come and breathe in our temple, Father God. Breathe the breath of life, oh Father God. Breathe in us, Father God. The peace, the power of your spirit, Lord. We don't want to be like Jacob that said, I didn't even know the Lord was here, Father. We know you're here now. We know that you're in us, Father. We know that you breathe in us, Father God, in your holy name. Amen. Give back. Pastor Michael, we're ready for you.